Without further ado, this is Brother Zach Mason. Thank you, everyone. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Father God Almighty, Lord, uh, thank you so much for bringing us together here this morning, Lord. Uh, thank you for these men and women who love you. I'm going to carve out a weekend to learn more of you, to hear your voice. And I pray that you be present here, Lord. You promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are present. So we know you're here this morning with us. We pray that we'd honor you and glorify you, and that you'd open all our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to understand, Father. In Jesus' name, let the Spirit fill this place, fill us with your power and your presence. Amen. Okay, so I have a lot of information, um, and I'm going to go through it very fast. Um, my, normally, when I speak or teach, I'm talking a lot about what. What is God going to do? And I am going to talk about that. But my major motivation for this conversation is truly to save your lives. And I don't mean that lightly. God is speaking today, and he's giving us very clear instructions on what we're supposed to be doing to protect your witness, to make sure you don't fall, and to make sure you don't lose your life in an unglorious way, in a way that only through, uh, hopefully, martyrdom that would benefit, you know, his glory. So, I'm going to be going fast, because there's a lot to cover. The what, I'm going to go through kind of fast, and I'm guaranteed to say something that you're like, what? So if you have questions, I'm going to try to go fast enough. I'll have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, if we don't get to your question, my daughter has her graduation party today. I'm already here under protest from my wife. So I have to make a beeline out as soon as pretty much right after I'm done or I'm going to be in big trouble. I've got to get the Chick-fil-A and pick up some food. Um, and you don't want to make her mad either, right? So that... Um, Anyways, that said, if you have more questions beyond what we can do today, I have a YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube, Zach Mason. Uh, you can reach out to me there. I can answer your questions. If Zen is uh, uh, willing, we can do uh, another show soon, and we can do a Q&A uh, there where you can call in and uh, ask questions there or uh, just, I guess, right in the chat. Um, that said, I also want to thank Joy and Justin and Sacred Word and Zen for inviting me here today for organizing this for all of us. Let's give them a round of applause for that. There's a lot of work, especially Joy. Thank you. Okay, uh, that said, uh, do take out notes, record it, whatever you want to do, because I have to go fast, all right, uh, Or because I know how I talk. So... Um, I've studied prophecy since high school, which at that point makes it more than 30 years. I've always approached it uh, without bias or agenda. I've just said, I just want to know what it says. I don't really have an agenda. I don't, wanna, I don't have a pet theory. I don't want to come up with my own theory and then try to prove it's right with Scripture. I really just want to know what it says. So over the years, there's things that didn't quite fit, and that, allowed, that predetermined attitude, I guess, helped me step back. And, and look at what scripture actually says. But like many of you, I've been speculating. What is it going to look like? What is the mark of the beast going to look like? What is this white horseman? What's the red horseman? What is all this stuff going to be? And uh, when I published my book, Revelation Unfolding, God had up to that point, uh, that was three years ago I published it, he had given me a lot of... Uh, I think very good insight and discreet allowed me to see things in Scripture to help me accurately predict things that are happening now. Much of what I predict in that book is happening now, and that was straight from Scripture. But then um, he allowed me to discover this phenomena that's been going on with dreams and visions. He is speaking today. He's warning us, and he's teaching through dreams and visions. If I one by one interviewed you and asked you about some vivid dreams uh, you've had. Maybe some of you have even had visions in your, in your quiet times. I would find that most of you, probably almost everyone here, since considering the crowd, has had an unusual dream. And as I helped you uh, decipher it, some of them are probably very literal, some are more symbolic, but 
we would discover that you've had dreams that fit with one of the major prophetic themes that everybody else has seen. I've been studying these. I've, I'm somewhere, I, I've lost track. I'm somewhere between three to 4,000 dreams I've individually you know, studied and, and analyzed over the past years. And I've also uh, um, taught in all kinds of places. And every single time I teach, people have had these same dreams. And in the dreams, they're very consistent, and God is speaking. Sometimes Jesus is, very, is right there in the dream, and he is saying what to do. We have answers now. We have authoritative answers. We're, the, the, for me, much of the book of Revelation, the speculation is done. I know most of the things that are coming and what they're going to look like. Um, we have prophetic words as well. One I've cited on my channel is a prophet. Uh, his channel on YouTube is You Be Ready. His real name is Byron Searle. Now, I'm very cautious. For those who watch my channel, you know I'm very analytical. Uh, I, I come at things with a cautious skepticism. I don't just embrace, you know, I'm not a person that someone says, oh, a prophetic word. Or, and I'm like, yes, yes, yeah, no. I'm like, what? Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> and I analyze. And I use biblical criteria. And there's only a handful. There's only six or seven people I've identified so far that I'm very confident are hearing from God. And they all show the fruit of the Spirit. They're very godly people. Their humility, you know, show humility. Their message is consistent. There's all kinds of criteria. I go through this on my channel. What is the criteria for evaluating somebody? But, of course, the biggest criteria that the Bible gives us is if someone says this is a word of knowledge from God about the future, does it come true? If it comes true, we know they're from God. Well, you be ready has multiple of those. He just had another one that he uh, was given five years ago about the election in Turkey. And uh, his prophecy just came true this last week. And the next video going up on my YouTube channel is going to be about that. So I really like you be ready because those are, he is simple. There's no... <laughs> Attention seeking, he doesn't even like giving his real, I mean, he gives his real name, but he's like, yeah, I'm not about me. He doesn't even show his face. He says, this is the word that God gave me. This is the title. This is the verse associated with it. Here's what he said, and then just go boom. And it's a direct word-for-word -word message from Jesus or the Father. He says, now go pray about it and see if he confirms this to you. And I'll tell you, I am extremely impressed uh, with the message. And I've learned things, things that, that have shocked me, like, for example, one West has got my attention, you know, in it, Jesus said, do you not understand that the bride of Christ is not the same thing as the body of Christ? That the bride is a subset of the body. And I went, hmm, I've always thought they were the same. Let me go look. Sure enough, the Bible does not require for the bride to be the same as the body. And all of a sudden, a lot more parables make sense, like the parable of the ten virgins and other things. And the guests of the wedding supper. So we do have God is speaking, and I've I'm and I'm very uh, I have very detailed understanding now of what we're supposed to be doing, and understanding. So some things that we know authoritatively: USA is mystery Babylon. I do believe the horror of Babylon, specifically in Revelation, applies to the greater. Uh, you know, Epstein Network, global elites, etc. And really, you could say Babylon is actually all of Western uh, society, but specifically, the United States has clearly been identified by God to hundreds of people as Mystery Babylon. There is no more doubt about that one. Um, the white horse is not just, I've always been taught growing up that the white horse was the spirit of Antichrist. Uh, that it was the release of the Antichrist. And the white horse does, now we know more though, we know better. And again, straight, God has revealed this to many people. The white horse is of the first seal is actually representing uh, a spirit of deception, which culminates at the end with the arrival, with the clear arrival of the Antichrist. But the initial white horse uh, is a spirit of deception. Uh, we also know there is no rapture yet. There is no pre-tribulation rapture, and I'm going to go through that in a minute. So we need to get ready. Okay, here's, uh, Scripture says the rapture is after judgment and persecution. In Revelation 14, should have opened my Bible already, sorry. 
um, Revelation 14, you have a very clear picture of the rapture, right? You have the Son of Man sitting on a, can I move this? Okay, yeah. A very clear picture of the Son of Man sitting on a cloud with crown, harvesting believers from the clouds, not touching the ground. That's right before the bowl of judgments, but it is after the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. It's also after um, the uh, two witnesses and after the seal, you know, judgments and all of those things. And, in fact, I'm just going to read real quick to you. Um, In Matthew 24... The disciples say to Jesus, they say, tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. So notice deception. He just, the first thing he talks about deception. He's, mentioned, he's in the same order as the book of Revelation, white horse. And unless you think, well, I haven't seen all these false messiahs. Yes, you have. There's lots of people who are claiming the name of Christ, Christian means little Christ, who aren't really Christians. Okay, and there's all kinds of New Age people that are actually saying, I am Christ, I have Christ in me, so I am Christ. This is actually a common thing in the New Age uh, religion. Next, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Red horsemen, see that you are not troubled, don't fear, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation. Nation is not territory, not country. The, the Greek word behind nation is ethnos. It means ethnicity. So race will rise against race. Are we seeing that happen? And kingdom against kingdom. That's why he's got two categories. Russia and Ukraine. And there will be famines, black horse, pestilences, white pale horse, and earthquakes in various places. Sixth seal. He hasn't mentioned the fifth seal. But then... And he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows, or birth pangs. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Oh, so, okay, there's the fifth seal. He didn't really skip it. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So notice the gospel being preached, the great harvest, comes after these seal judgments. Not before. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand, and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. This is Revelation 12 and 13 now. So now he's gotten to 12 and 13. Let him who is in the housetop not go down to anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes, etc. Uh, for then there will be a great tribulation such as not been seen since the beginning of the world and until those t- till this time nor shall ever again be. And unless those days were short, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Okay, And then... Verse 29, skipping that, says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds. That's the rapture. After tribulation. Okay. Same thing. Dreams and visions. I can tell you very clearly. There's there's all kinds of rapture dreams out there. There's three themes associated with them. They everyone who sees the rapture, they always see one of three things. They either see every city in their view getting nuked, or they see this incredibly powerful earthquake that nobody can survive, or they see two moons in the sky. The second moon being this bigger planet. And I've met people that have had that two moons dream. Originally, I kind of dismissed those dreams, but it's actually real. So I am speculating, thinking that there is this planetary object that comes into our orbit that causes the earthquake. People freak out, start nuking each other. 
That's my best guess. But that's when the rapture happens. Because at that point, it's just not possible for the elect to survive anymore. So the rapture is the ark. It's like Noah's ark. We're taken up when it's not possible to survive. The bowl of judgments are released. Nobody is saved after the rapture. Nobody is saved after the rapture. Then, after Armageddon and all of that is finished, then those who are raptured will come back and populate the millennial kingdom. Same thing, prophetic words by you being ready and others. Uh, there's specific words you can look at. You can look at uh, persecution. Uh, and fear is not an option, but a word he has called persecution. Jesus himself seems to be saying very clearly to not believe in a pre-trib rapture, that he actually hates that doctrine is what he says because it's going to get a lot of his people killed because they're, they're relaxed. They think they don't have to worry about this. And Jesus is very mad about it, actually. Why would God rapture a lukewarm generation? Why? All the other believers before us have had to go through persecution. Why would this generation of Christians that is the least dedicated, the most sinful generation of Christians I know of, why would it be, re be rewarded with escape? Jesus does not want an ugly bride. He wants a beautiful bride. And obedience is what is beautiful to him. So he's going to beautify us. All right, so um, talking about the white horseman. The white horseman is a supernatural entity. Okay, you have to understand this. These aren't just symbols. The white horse is a very powerful spiritual entity that promotes deception. Has anybody seen an increase in fake news and deception? Yes? So the white horse has been released. There's no more speculation. He's been released. Okay? And people, there's multiple people that have seen, had visions of the white horseman. And what they've seen is that the bow in his hand is not an archer's bow. It's a rainbow with only six colors. It's the LGBT agenda is the primary deception. Okay? The Greek word for rainbow and archer's bow is the same word. So for 2,000 years, without interviewing the apostle John directly, we couldn't really know. And because it says he goes out conquering a conquer, the assumption was made this is an archer bow without arrows. And so that was then interpreted to mean the Antichrist is going to conquer through peace, which is not supported by scripture. Okay, But it's actually a rainbow. It's not an archer's bow. So are you seeing this LGBT deception seem to take hold of the nations? And it is. It's every nation. It's, just not, it's not just the United States. False revivals and the New Apostolic Reformation, you really need to understand this, and I'm going to go through this so fast, and it's such a big topic. Um, the Asbury Revival was uh, fake, but it's also not fake. Okay. The believers who went were wanting more of Jesus, sincere believers. And, of course, Jesus goes with them. The Holy Spirit goes with them. So God was present there. The organization of it was not organic. It was organized by a group called the New Apostolic Reformation, the NAR. Okay, they planned it. They had a marketing video released a week before it started on February 8th. And uh, they've got a big movement planned. Okay, who is the NAR? New Ap Apostolic Reformation. You need to be aware, and I may make some people mad here, but you need to understand Jesus himself in these prophetic words has identified them and says what he thinks about them. Okay, anybody calling themselves an apostle, like I have an office of an apostle or a prophet, is probably belonging to this group. Most people, I have, if I criticize Kenneth Copeland, most of you probably don't have a problem with that, okay? 
if you know anything about Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Word of Faith movement, they are definitely part of this. However, Bill Johnson of Bethel Church is Kenneth Copeland's disciple. Okay? All the churches in this country sing Bethel worship songs. Bethel Church has some very problematic practices and doctrines. They, had, they have a, uh, a supernatural school within their church, and two former staff members wrote a book about rescuing the precious from the worthless. They took a verse out of Jeremiah, twisted it, and now what they're saying is what we need to do as Christians is we need to go and engage in occultic practices and do all of the New Age practices to try to discover what supernatural secrets the New Age religion has discovered, rescue that which is precious from them, claim it for Christianity, and then reject the worth, what we think is worthless. This is evil. And Bethel Church, Bill Johnson not only endorsed it, Bethel Church has not only endorsed it, they're selling it in their bookstore. Hillsong Church, full of scandals. They recently had a Christmas production where they uh, put a, had a, a presentation of Silent Night with scantily clad women dancing around, uh, sitting in the laps of men, and all of this was led, the song was led by a transgender on stage. Andy Stanley, anybody know about Andy Stanley? He's gone off the reservation. We don't even need to support the Bible anymore. We need to de-hitch from the Bible. It's written by a bunch of superstitious old men. He's secretly affirming of the LGBT agenda, although he's trying to dance around it and not say it clearly because he thinks it's wrong to chase people out of church that still believe homosexuality is wrong. So this, what you're seeing, is the beginning of the false church that will the false world religion that will rise up under the Antichrist. Jesus says that the leaders of the NAR are, going, are the wolves that will be the leaders of this movement. Apostles and prophets, they say that the apostles and prophets are uh, offices, that the apostles are the generals of the church, and therefore you as a Christian, if you are not under the spiritual covering of an apostle, then you're outside the army and don't have a role. Okay, that's a Nicolaitan, and Jesus calls them in these words, Nicolaitans, people conquerors. Okay, they also have a teaching that Jesus emptied himself completely of his divinity while he was on earth. He was just a man while he was on earth. They call that kenosis. That means that you can do greater things than him because he was just a man here. They call that kenosis. Sounds like gnosis of the Gnostics, who the Apostle John fought. Watch carefully. They have organized all these college revivals. They had 5,000 colleges with their disciples set up ready to start revivals on cue. But they're holding a very low profile because they want it to seem organic and natural. You have very sincere people going and participating in these, though. But you'll notice it's very worldly. And eventually, this is going to gain in popularity. They're going to be the leaders of it. And then they're all going to embrace the rainbow agenda. That's what's coming. But you have to be careful right now. You can't criticize too hard because we're still wheat and tares mixed. If you do a blank in condemnation, you're, you're condemning a bunch of true believers that are sincerely trying to follow Christ. We have to wait for Jesus Christ himself to naturally separate us, the wheat from the tares, and that's going to happen through persecution. He also says there are grand illusions coming. I'm sure these involve aliens. I'm sure they involve all kinds that there are going to be miracles performed, fire coming down from heaven, the book of Revelation says. Jesus says, do not believe what you see with your natural eyes. Doesn't matter how much you think you just saw something or the video you saw on the news. Don't believe it if it's in contrary to Scripture. I'm telling you clearly, don't believe what you see. I don't care how real it looks. The risk here, if you don't understand the risk of the white horseman, is your eternal destiny may be at risk, at least your reward. And, you know, while I still believe in eternal security, although there is a, some very good arguments for the possibility of being able to lose your salvation, 
without solving that theological debate, we legitimately debate within the church. I'm going to say this. There are many Christians who think they're saved that are not. And there's going to be a lot of people falling away, walking away from Christ that we never thought would. And the deception, the power of the deception, don't underestimate the power of the deception. It's supernatural. I've had good friends that used to serve with me on elder boards that are now atheists. There are people who are deconstructing their faith right and left, which is going to make you feel demotivated. All these deceptions are going to make you question. And I'm going to tell you very clearly, this is your power. The antidote, Jesus says, is to stay in his word daily. You must be holding on to the Bible with white knuckles. You cannot rest on your past years of study. The Bible is a daily bread. It's a daily power. If you do not stay in it daily, you will succumb to deception. Guaranteed. You do not have the mental or spiritual strength to resist the power of this deception without being in God's word daily. You can either believe me or not. I'm going to stay in it. Red Horseman, spirit of anger, a supernatural entity. Has anyone experienced unusual, unexpected, irrational anger in friends, family, coworkers, customers, clients lately? Raise your hand if you have. Raise your hand if you yourself have suddenly found yourself becoming irrationally angry and, and caught unexpected. <clears throat> this is supernatural. The Red Horseman is not a symbol. He has the power, the book of Revelation says, to make men kill one another. Okay? There's irrational anger everywhere. This is the sign the red horseman has been released. So, is there a pre-trib rapture? Well, I don't know. At least the first two horsemen came out without it. Flooding. Does anyone know what flooding is? And I don't mean water flooding. Okay, let me explain this to you. This is going to be really helpful. Many years, I learned this by going through a crisis myself. Many years ago, I went through a crisis where I was in a place where I was the most stressed I'd ever been in my life. And I became, there came this moment when I became a different person. And I didn't recognize myself, but I was out of control. My hands would shake. Um, for the first time, I've never been suicidal, but I was suddenly suicidal. And what made me uh, suicidal was the thought of going back to any place that would cause me stress. So going back to the house where my family was, I wanted to kill myself. Going back to work, I wanted to kill myself. I couldn't go anywhere I thought there was going to be stress. I found myself just driving through random states uh, with a gun in the back of the seat. I didn't want to use it. I didn't want to go, but I didn't want to be there anymore is all I knew. I was not rational. God saved me in a very unique way. He told me to go to the Noah's Ark exhibit in Kentucky. So I went. I was like, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. I go in. Literally, the, the animatronic prophet Noah turned and looked at me right as I came in the door of that room and said, God's timing is always perfect, and he always keeps his promises. And it just went, poof. I was like, oh. Immediately, I was buoyed up and realized, okay, there's hope, there's a plan. Later, I went to a conference, and I learned about this concept of flooding, and I realized this is something we all need to understand. What they explained is that flooding is not a psychological state of the brain. It is a physical, physical state of the brain. When you experience stress, your brain releases stress hormones. When your brain detects a certain level, like your, the level of stress hormones goes past a certain line, your brain decides there must be a lion about to eat you. There's no other reason for you to have that much stress. So your brain flips a switch and says, fight, flight, freeze, 
you become completely irrational. You can't consider anything unless uh, it means safety, unless it's going to take you to safety. It's a physical state of your brain. The only way out of it is to lower stress hormones. This, th this state can last for months. It can last 30 seconds. It can last for months. It can last for years. So the problem is that everybody in our society right now is stressed, right? Right? Financial problems, relationship problems, anger, betrayal, deception, confusion, all this creates stress. Everybody in our society is going to go into flooding at once. This is why we go into phase one as a country, which I, I call phase one. It's the chaos section where people just start killing each other. Okay, that's why, because everybody goes into flooding. You have to be spiritually strong so that you can lower your stress and not go into flooding yourself because you have to be able to bring, to speak God's supernatural peace to others and help them reduce stress so they can come out of flooding. Everybody understand? Okay, remember that concept. When you see somebody that seems to be flying off the handle, it's not rational, especially if you see their hands shaking. Just speak peacefully to them. Forget about what they're saying. It's not relevant. Just tell them, you're safe. You're safe. You're safe here with me. Don't worry. You'll see how quickly they relax. The red horseman, because of flooding, because of all this, he caused, and this, this anger, this supernatural anger he provokes, this is what causes chaos, which is phase one of the red horse in America, then civil war, which is phase two, and then eventually World War III, which is phases three and four. If you need to know more about those, go to my channel, because I'm already behind on time. Um, the risk here is your premature physical death, not as a martyr, but in shame. Many of us going through the tribulation uh, will give our lives for Christ, but I would hate for you to be killed in an embarrassing way. Okay, if you are not protected against the red horseman, then you're going to get swept up in anger and you're going to be killed because of it. And it won't be for the glory of Christ. It'll be, you're going to look foolish. Okay? Two antidotes. Stay in the Word. We were talking about that. Also, pray daily. Okay? You have to be first thing in the morning. Be in prayer. Be in His Spirit. Spend time with Him. Let Him fill you. And be in the Word. Doing those things... The, the, those two habits, along with fellowship and community, are what tap you into God's power. If you don't do those, I'm telling you as an experienced minister who leads a ministry that strengthens believers, that's our whole purpose. There is no way to be tapped into God's power without those habit, those two habits. When you are in those habits regularly every day, His water, His power flows through you. You just begin growing you get stronger, and you become an oasis of water, an oasis of peace, while everybody else who's dry, because they're not filled with God's power, they don't have his water flowing through them, they become dry trees, they become very easily burned. They get set on fire with anger very easily. You need to be the water that can put those fires out. You're not going to be able to do it if you're not in the Word and not in prayer every day. So if you ignore that instruction... If you go out of here, without, if you're not in the Word now every single day, and if you're not in prayer every single day, and you don't commit to that in this room, and going forward, your safety is not guaranteed. Because this anger is supernatural. It flares up like that. And you don't know when it's going to come on you. Okay? And you'll get confronted with somebody else who's even more angry than you. And if you're not water to their fire and you respond with any kind of fire, boom, next thing you know, what happens? You have no idea. Things are going to get out of control. Don't ignore that, please. Black horsemen, spirit of famine. The banking collapse is the beginning. I've been predicting this for two years. If you've been on my channel for two years, last time I came, 
I said, it's going to begin with the financial collapse. And then I had clarity from the dreams and visions. It's specifically a banking collapse is what starts it. It started, but right, what God has shown is the financial collapse is going like this. It's like an airplane slowly going down. And there's going to come a moment when the last engine gives out and poof, it goes off the cliff. We haven't hit the cliff yet, but we're going down. As to the timing, my best bet is this October. Could be wrong. That's pure speculation, but I do have some reason to believe that. Stark unemployment. People aren't going to have jobs. Stress is going up. Food shortages are going to become severe probably later this year. Again, we might still, it might be 2024. I'd be very surprised if we get past 2024. But I don't know. I've been surprised before. Um, World War III. Sabotage, you know, World War III is going to cause food shortages, you know, as places like Ukraine, the wheat gets cut off. Sabotage, there's somebody going around burning down farm production, you know, food production facilities. That's causing, that's contributing. Global supply chains are breaking down. That's going to contribute to it. Drought, we had the worst drought in 1,300 years in this country last year. Most of the harvest failed. We don't have a lot in our storehouses in the United States, and most people are not aware of that. That's going to contribute. Inflation is going to make it difficult for people to buy. All of these things together are going to contribute to the food shortages. The risk here is starvation and destitution. How do you prepare? Well, hopefully, if you've been listening to me or a lot of other people, you've got food stored up at least six months worth. That's the number God's been telling people, six months worth of food. Four to eight months, I average the six. He's been telling some people four, some people eight. I guess it depends on where they live. All right? But six months is probably safe because you can always stretch six to go to eight. Um, if you can, store up enough for the people, the refugees, people are coming to, to your house that aren't ready. Be good to have extra. God may bring you people to help. Be generous. God showed me that. If I was generous in my house, that we would be fine through this time. If you haven't stored this up, I would say it's an emergency. I would say go do it now, okay? Don't wait because these food shortages are going to start at some point. We don't know exactly when, but you really don't have time. You need to, Jesus has also been saying learn to hear his voice. When you're praying, you should be praising God. By the way, that's a little trick. If you have... A bout of anxiety or fear or anger or lust or whatever it is that's all of a sudden coming on your mind, stop and just verbally praise God out loud. And the evil spirits that are trying to put those thoughts in your mind, that initial attack, they will flee because they can't stand to hear him praised. It's temporary relief. It's not permanent. But it will help provide immediate relief. Um, but that said, in prayer, not only do you praise God, you need to be in repentance daily. Repentance means turned away from the world and sin and going after him wholeheartedly. Repentance is not feeling sorry for your sins. I'm sorry to say, nobody is saved by feeling sorry for your sins. You're saved by repenting. By turning your back on the world, that's what the Hebrew word means. And going God's way. Covered by the blood, trusting the blood as you do that for atonement. Okay. But just feeling sorry for a moment doesn't do it. Confess your sins daily. You have to keep the relationship with God clear. We have daily sins. We have to confess them daily in prayer. That's symbolized in the, in the bronze lab or outside the temple of God. That's why Jesus told Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part of me. He didn't mean you're not saved. He said you're washed head to toe. He just meant that our relationship is broken if you have unconfessed sin. It's like trying to talk to someone you hurt their feelings and offended them, and you don't want to talk about it. You just want to pretend like the relationship is going to go on without addressing what you did to them. Don't do that. Keep the relationship clear with God. Pray for others, of course. Pray for our nation. But you need to have a significant amount of your time in prayer where you're just sitting there listening. Listening to what he has to say to you. Christ is saying in these words that we have to be able to hear his voice. We have to learn to hear his voice. He says, you have to believe you're hearing my voice. You have to have faith that that voice you're hearing is me. Okay. 
But that voice is going to be very needed because when these problems start, you're going to have to be able to go into prayer and say, what do I do? And he's going to say, go right or go left. And I'm sorry, but as much as I, I love Scripture, but Scripture's not going to tell you to go right or left on December 7th at 9 a.m. when you're trying to figure out where to get food. That isn't in the Bible. You need the Holy Spirit's daily guidance for that. Everybody understand? You have to learn to hear his voice. But if you do that now, now is the time. He will guide you. Increase obedience, increase faith. Real quick, this is huge. Every time you sin, you legally, legally, legally empower the enemy and his forces against you. God is not going to suspend his spiritual laws. If he did, the devil could call him lawless. God will not let be called lawless. He doesn't break his own laws. Spiritual laws are in place, just like the physical laws. Every time you sin, you empower the enemy. So increase your obedience, because that's the way you empower God's angels on your behalf, the behalf of your family and your community. Pray for our nation as well. Increase your faith. Most, many of you have probably been having financial problems lately, and you've probably been learning to walk in faith. Has anybody had that lately? Okay, if that's been going on with you, he's training you to have faith now so that you can lead others in faith later. Okay? Don't take it as a sign he doesn't love you. He's training you. Trust. He can provide. Pale horse. Next pandemic is... uh, on its way, World Health Organization's already warning us about it. Say, oh, yeah, there's a bad one coming. Okay, I'm listening. I'm sure there is. I'm sure it's man-made, which is another reason why these horsemen, they're all the wrath of man and the enemy. These aren't the wrath of God. The bowl of judgments are the wrath of God. Okay. Uh, I think it's prob- I think the next one is probably the Marburg vir- virus, which has been uh, genetically enhanced to uh, be highly con- uh, contagious. It's a form of Ebola. It's already started in Africa, which is what, where we expected it to start according to Scripture. And Zechariah 6 tells us it starts in Africa. But it's growing very slowly because it's not fast like coronavirus. Um, but then it's going to get speed at some point. So I think that's probably the next one. That is speculation. I don't have a specific word saying Marburg virus is it, but I believe I'm watching it. I believe that's probably it. Okay, the white, red, black horsemen create four elements that swirl the tornado. So financial collapse, food shortage, political corruption being exposed, and race riots. These are four elements you're going to see increase in the future that are going to create the swirling clouds. God is pictured in dreams a tornado, which represents phase one of the Red Horseman. And these four elements create the swirling clouds. The lockdowns related to this next pandemic, uh, which will be enforced this time by National Guard martial law, that adds the fifth element that turned the swirling clouds into a full-blown tornado in our country. Because people freak out, and that's when the chaos and violence start. And anybody leaving your house will be shot. Okay, that's what people have seen. Um, Premature physical death is a risk by shooting or plague. You know, I want to be as I want to be able to witness for Christ and spread the gospel as long as possible. So the antidote to this is get your house in order, which we've already gone through the elements. God has says get your house in order is what Jesus is saying, and He's defined it. He said this is what I mean by getting your house in order. Be in prayer daily, be in the word daily, increase obedience, increase faith, learn to hear my voice. If you're abiding in Christ well, you will not be infected by the plague. That is what God is promising. Supernatural protection from these things, not from persecution. I don't mean go out there and risk yourself needlessly, but he is going to protect us supernaturally if we're abiding in Christ well through these disciplines, in obedience and in faith. That's what he's showing. Christians who uh, are not 
are going to be removed because he needs his bride to be a faithful witness. Many people calling themselves Christian who aren't will just walk away and deconstruct their faith. Others who aren't ready, who aren't going to be able to be a faithful witness for the, during the tribulation will just be removed through physical death because he needs his bride to be a faithful witness. I know this is a, a harsh word, but I'm telling you what, is, what it is. Persecution. What's been seen is that Biden is going to pass away. Kamala Harris is going to take over. This is what I'm expecting. Uh, when the lockdowns begin, Christians will be blamed for spreading the virus by misinformation about the pandemic. The Constitution will be suspended. Okay. So, U.S. Constitution is going to be suspended. We've already signed the treaty that allows this with the World Health Organization. Right. So, what this next one's going to be so serious, and it will be real. It's going to be a real sickness. Um, they're going to lock it down, and then Christians, a lot of Christians, conservatives, are going to get online and say, hey, uh, you know, don't fear, you know, this is man-made, et cetera, or this, this. They're going to protest lockdowns, and that's going to be the justification to come after Christians. They're going to shut down Christian broadcasting. Uh, all channels on YouTube, you know, CBN, you name it, no more Christian broadcasting. Social media posts result in arrests, uh, camps. Christians are going to be blamed for persecution of LGBT. This creates great anger fueled by the red horse. Christians will be blamed for food shortages. They're going to say we hoarded. We're prepared. They're going to call it hoarding and say we caused the shortages by our preparations. Okay, so you're going to be blamed for everything. Christians will be accused of being white supremacists in some cases and others for supporting Trump. Uh, you're, the risk is getting arrested for the wrong thing. Okay. I say, don't bother posting truth about the virus on social media. Preach the gospel instead. You're not, if someone isn't saved, they're not going to believe the truth, right? There's no point in trying to teach people lost in deception any truth when they're lost in deception. The only way they can be freed is through the power of the Holy Spirit, so focus on preaching the gospel. Okay? Don't waste your opportunity to witness on just one item of the tribulation. Does that make sense? That's my opinion. I don't have a word from Jesus on that one. That was my opinion on that one. Uh, prepare yourself for persecution. Let go of your life and choose to be faithful to the end. Endure, he who endures to the end will be saved. Okay? But be ready. Think about all the possible scenarios. Choose now what you would do. Uh, earthquake. Biden administration is going to announce a two-state solution for Israel. At some point, that's going to be announced. I think with the signing of it, I think is what provokes the earthquake. But that is connected to the, the earthquake that divides our country. What's been seen is the Mississippi becomes an ocean and it divides the country in half. That also launches the Civil War, which is phase two. So when you see the Israel being divided, God divides our country, both politically and physically. Uh, this involves also at some point suitcase nukes going off in a lot of the cities, Los Angeles, Seattle, San Francisco, Chicago, New York City, Dallas, Atlanta. Um, you need to move out of any city. If you're living too close to a city, you need to move at least 50 miles away if you can. Yeah, you don't want to be along the Mississippi either. Uh, don't want to be in the state of Louisiana, period, uh, from what I've seen of the maps that people have seen. Okay, and if you don't, you know, I know I'm just saying this this morning, maybe the first time you're hearing it, but go research yourself, see what people have seen. The great harvest begins after phase three. It does not begin, there's no revival now. Revival is, we are being renewed. Christians right now are being renewed. We're moving into repent. We're becoming stronger. We're becoming more obedient. There is a renewal of rejuvenation going among, you know, happening in the body of Christ. But revival, where n masses of non-Christians come to Christ and salvation, God has said, Jesus says, that it will not start until we lose electricity. He specifically has said that. Where many Christians are not believing these things are happening. They're asleep. As soon, when the storm starts, what he's shown is that when the storm starts, that's when we go wake up other Christians. That's when other Christians start waking up. The full body starts waking up. When the loss of electricity happens, that's when the, the massive global revival starts of Revelation 7. Um, again, risk of getting killed for the wrong thing. 
Do not, oops, don't support either side. Can I go back? I can't. Don't support either side in the coming civil war. Don't support Trump's side. Don't support the other side. We, don't be red. Don't be blue. Be white. Okay, be the third group. Be those righteous saints who are focused on gospel advancement. Advance the kingdom, not America. I know I'm running out of time here. This is a word from uh, you be ready here. Oops. Oh, there it goes. Yes, I hear my timer. Sorry. I gave myself a few more. Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty cool. Yes. All right, so I'm going to, this is very, very important. Okay, this is from a word UB Ready gave in 2018, and I personally am convinced at this point that this is actually Jesus speaking, not UB Ready. That's my personal belief at this point. I'm convinced of it. It said, My son, many fearful things are coming upon the world. Those who are not strong in my word will be in fear. But I say fear is not an option, for it is contrary to my word. My remnant have been trained to have faith, and in the coming days, great faith will be required. Fearful things will come upon the earth that will confuse and even cause those not in my word to scream in fear. Much blood will be shed, and destruction around the world will be very fearful to witness. My son, I have shown in dreams and visions the coming calamities, and even some of my remnant are fearful. I say again, fear is not an option. My remnant must not fear what is coming upon the earth, but trust in me to deliver them from all our terrors. Fear comes from not being in God's word. Okay, that's why I said that at the beginning. So, here's what you really need to understand. The technical reason for this is, God says throughout scripture, do not be afraid, repeatedly, right? Therefore, if you are afraid... You are in sin. Fear is a sin. Because you're disobeying God's word. Anxiety is a sin. Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. So if you are anxious, you're in sin. Now the first fearful thoughts or first anxious thoughts are not from you. That's not sin. Those are temptations. Those are from the enemy trying to get you to become fearful or become anxious. It's when you grab them and say, yes, I should be anxious. Yes, I should be fearful. And you let it circulate. That's when you're in sin. And when you do that, when you allow fear in, that is the gateway for all kinds of other sins. You're empowering the enemy legally against you when you do that. And this is why God is so persistent do not fear because faith is the opposite of fear and faith is credited to us as righteousness therefore fear is credited to us as unrighteousness fear will get you in trouble you just trust just trust you can't just say though i'm not going to be afraid you have to choose faith to fill the fear you have to ask god to grant you faith but if you do that in prayer, you say, God, grant me faith, grant me trust, he will. I wish I had a lot longer to talk on that. No fear, prayer daily, learn to hear his voice, Bible daily, no truth, get strength, strong community, you need a personal prayer team, I would strongly recommend that. Um, you know, multiple people you're praying with repeatedly every week, increase your obedience continually, Have absolute faith, trust, Advance the kingdom, not America. And don't take the mark of the beast. There's no forgiveness for that. Don't do that one. You, there's going to be people, there's going to be Christians saying, you can take it, it's okay, God will forgive you, you need to eat. Don't do it. There is no forgiveness. And endure until the end, and you will be saved. So, I know I'm over time. Is there any quick question I can answer? Is everybody thoroughly scared now? Don't be. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say, you know, I whether without going along into the predictive program and I've heard that, you know, through Hollywood, et cetera. Maybe, but I think it's also much more likely that a lot of Hollywood writers and and people have had nightmares. 
about coming things, just like we're having dreams about them. And then they say, oh, wow, that was crazy, and they make a movie about it. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to be a conspiracy. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, sure, so real simple, we're talking about specific instructions. I got to go fast, I'm sorry. Uh, Luke 12 was specific instructions. The disciples saying on a specific mission, saying, I'm, you're going to engage in faith. I'm training you to have faith and trust right now, so take no preparation. That was for them then. We are being told now to have faith as well. But when Noah built the ark, there was no instructions before that about preparing for anything. Noah was given a specific instruction. There's judgment coming. Build the ark. Blue skies, build the ark. If Noah had not believed that specific warning given to him individually through God's direct warning, Noah would have died and his family. So Noah heard the warning. God told him to prepare. He prepared. He was saved. Okay, so bottom line is, I've made preparations. because If you hear these warnings, if you believe the warnings, you prove your belief through action of preparation. If you don't prepare, it means you didn't believe the warning. It's that simple. Now, all my preparations could go up in fire and smoke day one. I could have an asteroid hit my house and all my stores. I'm like, but if that happened... I would know God would keep me after that. He would supernaturally provide. But if I don't prepare at all, it means I didn't have faith at all. Does that make sense? Well, he speaks through others as well. But you can take what you've heard through others and uh, ask him to confirm it. Okay. I got to stop there. All right. Thank you, Zach. We'll have to schedule a follow-up AMA with Zen because I think, or myself, so that we can get some questions answered. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions after that.